Roy Harris Jenkins, Baron Jenkins of Hillhead, the 11th of November 1920 to the 5th of January 2003, was a British Labour Party, SDP, and Liberal Democrat politician and biographer of British political leaders. The son of a Welsh coal miner and trade unionist, later a Labour MP and government minister, Roy Jenkins was educated at Oxford University and served as an intelligence officer in the Second World War. Elected to Parliament as a Labour MP in 1948, he went on to serve in two major posts in Harold Wilson's first government. As Home Secretary from 1965 to 1967, he sought to build what he described as a civilised society, with measures such as the effective abolition in Britain of both capital punishment and theatre censorship, the decriminalisation of homosexuality, relaxing of divorce law, suspension of birching and the liberalisation of abortion law. As Chancellor of the Exchequer between 1967 and 1970, he pursued a tight fiscal policy. He was elected Deputy Leader of the Labour Party on 8 July 1970, but resigned in 1972 because he supported entry to the European communities, while the party opposed it. When Wilson re-entered government in 1974, Jenkins returned to the Home Office. However, increasingly disenchanted by the leftward swing of the Labour Party, he chose to leave British politics in 1976. The following year, he was appointed President of the European Commission, serving until 1981. He was the first British holder of this office, and is likely to be the only such considering the United Kingdom's decision in June 2016 to leave the European Union. He returned to British politics in 1981, still dismayed with the Labour Party's leftward swing under Michael Foote, he was one of the Gang of Four centrist Labour MPs who formed the Social Democratic Party In 1982, Jenkins won a famous by-election in a Conservative seat and returned to Parliament, he was Prime Minister-designate of the SDP Liberal Alliance in the 1983 general election. However, after disappointment with the performance of the SDP, he resigned as its leader. In 1987, he was elected to succeed Harold Macmillan as Chancellor of the University of Oxford following the latter's death. He held this position until his own death 16 years later. A few months after becoming Chancellor, he was defeated in his Hillhead constituency by the Labour candidate, George Galloway. Jenkins accepted a life peerage and sat as a Liberal Democrat. In the late 1990s, he was an advisor to Tony Blair and chaired the Jenkins Commission on Electoral Reform. Jenkins died in 2003, aged 82. In addition to his political career, he was also a noted historian, biographer and writer. His A Life at the Center is regarded as one of the best autobiographies of the later 20th century, which will be read with pleasure long after most examples of the genre have been forgotten. Early life Born in Aberzechan, Monmouthshire, in southeastern Wales, as an only child, Roy Jenkins was the son of a National Union of Mineworkers official, Arthur Jenkins. His father was imprisoned during the 1926 general strike for his alleged involvement in disturbances. Arthur Jenkins later became president of the South Wales Miners' Federation and member of parliament for Pontypool, parliamentary private secretary to Clement Attlee, and briefly a minister in the 1945 Labour government. Roy Jenkins' mother, Hattie Harris, was the daughter of a steelworks manager. Jenkins was educated at Aberzechan County Grammar School, University College, Cardiff, and at Balliol College, Oxford, where he was twice defeated for the presidency of the Oxford Union but took first-class honours in politics, philosophy and economics PPE. His university colleagues included Tony Crossland, Dennis Healy and Edward Heath, and he became friends with all three, although he was never particularly close to Healy. In John Campbell's book A Well Rounded Life, a romantic relationship between Jenkins and Crossland was detailed. During the Second World War, Jenkins served with the Royal Artillery and then as a Bletchley Park codebreaker, reaching the rank of captain. <laughs> <laughs> Member of Parliament 1948 Having failed to win Solihull in 1945, he was elected to the House of Commons in a 1948 by-election as the Member of Parliament for Southwark Central, becoming the ''Baby of the House''. 
His constituency was abolished in boundary changes for the 1950 general election, when he stood instead in the new Birmingham Steckford constituency. He won the seat, and represented the constituency until 1977. Jenkins was principal sponsor, in 1959, of the bill which became the Liberalizing Obscene Publications Act, responsible for establishing the liable to deprave and corrupt criterion as a basis for a prosecution of suspect material and for specifying literary merit as a possible defense. Like Healy and Crossland, he had been a close friend of Hugh Gateskill and for them Gateskill's death and the elevation of Harold Wilson as Labour Party leader was a setback. After the 1964 general election Jenkins was appointed Minister of Aviation and was sworn of the Privy Council. While at aviation he oversaw the high-profile cancellations of the BACTSR2 and Concorde projects although the latter was later reversed after strong opposition from the French government. In January 1965 Patrick Gordon Walker resigned as Foreign Secretary and in the ensuing reshuffle Wilson offered Jenkins the Department for Education and Science, however, he declined it, preferring to stay at aviation. Cabinet In the summer of 1965 Jenkins eagerly accepted an offer to replace Frank Soskais as Home Secretary. However Wilson, dismayed by a sudden bout of press speculation about the potential move, delayed Jenkins' appointment until December. Once Jenkins took office, the youngest Home Secretary since Churchill, he immediately set about reforming the operation and organization of the Home Office. The principal private secretary, head of the press and publicity department and permanent undersecretary were all replaced. He also redesigned his office, famously replacing the board on which condemned prisoners were listed with a fridge. After the 1966 general election, in which Labour won a comfortable majority, Jenkins pushed through a series of police reforms which reduced the number of separate forces from 117 to 49. Immigration was a divisive and provocative issue during the late 1960s and on 23 May 1966 Jenkins delivered a speech on race relations, which is widely considered to be one of his best. Addressing a London meeting of the National Committee for Commonwealth Immigrants he notably defined integration not as a flattening process of assimilation but as equal opportunity, accompanied by cultural diversity, in an atmosphere of mutual tolerance. Before going on to ask Where in the world is there a university which could preserve its fame, or a cultural centre which could keep its eminence, or a metropolis which could hold its drawing power, if it were to turn inwards and serve only its own hinterland and its own racial group? and concluding that to live apart, for a person, a city, a country, is to lead a life of declining intellectual stimulation. Jenkins is often seen as responsible for the most wide-ranging social reforms of the late 1960s, with popular historian Andrew Marr claiming the greatest changes of the labor years were thanks to Jenkins. He refused to authorize the birching of prisoners and was responsible for the relaxation of the laws relating to divorce and the abolition of theater censorship and gave government support to David Steele's private member's bill for the legalization of abortion and Leo Abs's bill for the decriminalization of homosexuality. Wilson, with his Puritan background, was not especially sympathetic to these developments, however. Jenkins replied to public criticism by asserting that the so-called permissive society was in reality the civilized society. For some conservatives, such as Peter Hitchens, Jenkins' reforms remain objectionable. In his book The Abolition of Britain, Hitchens accuses him of being a cultural revolutionary who takes a large part of the responsibility for the decline of traditional values in Britain. From 1967 to 1970 Jenkins served as Chancellor of the Exchequer, replacing James Callaghan following the devaluation crisis of November 1967. He quickly gained a reputation as a particularly tough Chancellor with his 1968 budget increasing taxes by £923 million, more than twice the increase of any previous budget to date. Despite Edward Heath claiming it was a hard, cold budget, without any glimmer of warmth, Jenkins' first budget broadly received a warm reception, with Harold Wilson remarking that it was widely acclaimed as a speech of surpassing quality and elegance and Barbara Castle that it took everyone's breath away. However, following a further sterling crisis in November 1968 Jenkins was forced to raise taxes by a further £250 million. 
After this the currency markets slowly began to settle and his 1969 budget represented more of the same with a £340 million increase in taxation to further limit consumption. By May 1969 Britain's current account position was in surplus, thanks to a growth in exports, a drop in overall consumption and, in part, the inland revenue correcting a previous underestimation in export figures. In July Jenkins was also able to announce that the size of Britain's foreign currency reserves had been increased by almost $1 billion since the beginning of the year. It was at this time that he presided over Britain's only excess of government revenue over expenditure in the period 1936-7-1987-8. Thanks in part to these successes there was a high expectation that the 1970 budget would be a more generous one. Jenkins, however, was cautious about the stability of Britain's recovery and decided to present a more muted and fiscally neutral budget. It is often argued that this, combined with a series of bad trade figures, contributed to the Conservative victory at the 1970 general election. Historians and economists have often praised Jenkins for presiding over the transformation in Britain's fiscal and current account positions towards the end of the 1960s. Andrew Marr, for example, described him as one of the 20th century's most successful chancellors. Shadow Cabinet 1970-1974 After Labour unexpectedly lost power in 1970 Jenkins was appointed Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer by Harold Wilson. Jenkins was also subsequently elected to the deputy leadership of the Labour Party in July 1970, defeating future Labour leader Michael Foote and former leader of the Commons Fred Pert at the first ballot. At this time he appeared the natural successor to Harold Wilson, and it appeared to many only a matter of time before he inherited the leadership of the party, and the opportunity to become Prime Minister. This changed completely, however, as Jenkins refused to accept the tide of anti-European feeling that became prevalent in the Labour Party in the early 1970s. In 1972, he led 69 Labour MPs through the division lobby in support of the Heath government's motion to take Britain into the EEC. In so doing they were defying a three-line whip and a five-to-one vote at the Labour Party annual conference. Jenkins' action gave the European cause a legitimacy that would have otherwise been absent had the issue been considered solely as a party political matter. At this stage, however, Jenkins would not fully abandon his position as a political insider, and chose to stand again for deputy leader, an act his colleague David Marquand claimed he later came to regret. Jenkins narrowly defeated Michael Foote on a second ballot. Six months later, however, he resigned both the deputy leadership and his shadow cabinet position in April 1972, over the party's policy on favouring a referendum on British membership of the European Economic Community EEC. This led to some former admirers, including Roy Hattersley, choosing to distance themselves from Jenkins. His lavish lifestyle—Wilson once described him as more a socialite than a socialist had already alienated much of the Labour Party from him. Wilson accused him of having an affair with socialite Anne Fleming, and it was true. Jenkins returned to the Shadow Cabinet in November 1973 as Shadow Home Secretary. <laughs> Return to government 1974 -1977. When Labour returned to power in early 1974, Jenkins was appointed Home Secretary for the second time. Earlier, he had been promised the Treasury, however, Wilson later decided to appoint Dennis Healy as Chancellor instead. Upon hearing from Bernard Donahue that Wilson had reneged on his promise, Jenkins reacted angrily. Despite being on a public staircase, he is reported to have shouted, You tell Harold Wilson he must bloody well come to see me and if he doesn't watch out, I won't join his bloody government. This is typical of the bloody awful way Harold Wilson does things. Jenkins served from 1974 to 1976. In this period he undermined his previous liberal credentials to some extent by pushing through the Controversial Prevention of Terrorism Act, which, among other things, extended the length of time suspects could be held in custody and instituted exclusion orders. Although becoming increasingly disillusioned during this time by what he considered the party's drift to the left, he was the leading Labour figure in the referendum in September 1975 which saw the «Yes» campaign win a 2-to-1 victory in the referendum on continued membership of the European community. Return 
Topic: <laughs> President of the European Commission, 1977 to 1981. When Harold Wilson suddenly resigned as Prime Minister, Jenkins was one of six candidates for the leadership of the Labour Party in March 1976, but came third out of the six candidates in the first ballot, behind Callaghan and Michael Foote. Realising that his vote was lower than expected, and sensing that the Parliamentary Party was in no mood to overlook his actions five years before, he immediately withdrew from the contest. Jenkins had wanted to become Foreign Secretary, but accepted an appointment as President of the European Commission succeeding François Xavier Orderly after Callaghan appointed Anthony Crossland to the Foreign Office. The main development overseen by the Jenkins Commission was the development of the Economic and Monetary Union of the European Union from 1977, which began in 1979 as the European Monetary System, a forerunner of the single currency or euro. President Jenkins was the first president to attend a G8 summit on behalf of the community. Jenkins remained in Brussels until 1981, contemplating the political changes in the UK from there. He received an honorary degree Doctor of Laws from the University of Bath in 1978. <laughs> Return to Parliament 1982-1987 Leadership of the Social Democratic Party As one of the so-called Gang of Four, Roy Jenkins was a founder of the Social Democratic Party in January 1981 with David Owen, Bill Rogers and Shirley Williams. He attempted to re-enter Parliament at the Warrington by-election in 1981 but Labour retained the seat with a small majority. He was more successful in 1982, being elected in the Glasgow Hillhead by-election as the Member of Parliament for a previously conservative held seat. During the 1983 election campaign his position as the Prime Minister designate for the SDP Liberal Alliance was questioned by his close colleagues, as his campaign style was now regarded as ineffective, the Liberal leader David Steele was considered to have a greater rapport with the electorate. He led the new party from March 1982 until after the 1983 general election, when Owen succeeded him unopposed. Jenkins was disappointed with Owen's move to the right, and his acceptance and backing of some of Thatcher's policies. At heart, Jenkins remained a Keynesian. He continued to serve as SDP Member of Parliament for Glasgow Hillhead until his defeat at the 1987 general election by the Labour candidate George Galloway, after boundary changes in 1983 had changed the character of the constituency. <laughs> Peerage, achievements, books and death From 1987, Jenkins remained in politics as a member of the House of Lords as a life peer with the title Baron Jenkins of Hillhead, of Pontypool in the county of Gwent. Also in 1987, Jenkins was elected Chancellor of the University of Oxford. In 1988 he fought and won an amendment to the Education Reform Act 1988, guaranteeing academic freedom of speech in further and higher education establishments. This affords and protects the right of students and academics to question and test received wisdom," and has been incorporated into the statutes or articles and instruments of governance of all universities and colleges in Britain. In 1993, he was appointed to the Order of Merit. He was leader of the Liberal Democrats in the Lords until 1997. In December 1997, he was appointed chair of a government-appointed independent commission on the voting system, which became known as the Jenkins Commission to consider alternative voting systems for the UK. The Jenkins Commission reported in favour of a new uniquely British mixed-member proportional system called Alternative Vote Top-Up, or Limited AMS, in October 1998, although no action was taken on this recommendation. Jenkins wrote 19 books, including a biography of Gladstone 1995, which won the 1995 Whitbread Award for Biography, and a much acclaimed biography of Winston Churchill 2001. His official biographer, Andrew Adonis, Baron Adonis, was to have finished the Churchill biography had Jenkins not survived the heart surgery he underwent towards the end of its writing. 
The popular historian Paul Johnson called it the best one volume biography on its subject. Jenkins underwent heart surgery in November 2000 and postponed his 80th birthday celebrations by having a celebratory party on the 7th of March 2001. He died on the 5th of January 2003, aged 82, after suffering a heart attack at his home at East Hendred in Oxfordshire. His last words to his wife were, Two eggs, please, lightly poached." At the time of his death Jenkins was apparently starting work on a biography of U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Jenkins is seen by many as a key influence on "...new labor," as the Labor Party marketed itself after the election of Tony Blair who served as Prime Minister from winning the first of three successive general elections in 1997 in 1994, when the party abandoned many of its long-established policies including nationalization, nuclear disarmament and unconditional support for the trade unions. He was well regarded by other Labour statesmen including Tony Benn, but was strongly criticized by others including Dennis Healy, who condemned the SDP split as a disaster. For the Labour Party which prolonged their time in opposition and allowed the Tories to have an unbroken run of 18 years in government, his alma mater, Cardiff University honoured the memory of Roy Jenkins by naming one of its halls of residence Roy Jenkins Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage and personal life On 20 January 1945, Jenkins married Mary Jennifer Jennifer Morris 18 January 1921 to 2 February 2017. They were married for almost 58 years until his death, although he had several affairs. She was made a DBE for services to ancient and historical buildings. They had two sons, Charles and Edward, and a daughter, Cynthia. Early in his life Jenkins had a homosexual relationship with Anthony Crossland. Topic. Styles of address 1920–1948, Mr. Roy H. Jenkins 1948–1964, Mr. Roy H. Jenkins, M.P. 1964–1977, The Right Honorable Roy H. Jenkins, M.P. 1977–1982, The Right Honorable Roy H. Jenkins 1982–1987, The Right Honorable Roy H. Jenkins M.P. 1987, The Right Honorable Roy H. Jenkins 1987–1993, The Right Honorable The Lord Jenkins of Hillhead P.C. 1993–2003, The Right Honorable The Lord Jenkins of Hillhead Ohm P.C. Works. Roosevelt. Pan Macmillan, 2005. ISBN 0-330-43206-0. Churchill. Macmillan, 2001. ISBN 0-333-78290-9. The Chancellors. Macmillan, 1998. ISBN 0-333-73057-7. Gladstone. Macmillan, 1995. ISBN 0-8129-6641-4. Portraits and Miniatures. Bloomsbury, 1993. ISBN 978-1-4482-0321-5. A Life at the Center. Macmillan, 1991. ISBN 0-333-55164-8. Gallery of 20th Century Portraits and Oxford Papers. David and Charles, 1989. ISBN 0-7153-9299-9. Truman. HarperCollins. 1986. ISBN 0-06-015580-9. Baldwin. Collins. 1984. ISBN 0-00-217586-X. Nine Men of Power. Hamish Hamilton. 1974. ISBN 978-0241891384. Asquith. Collins, 1964. ISBN 0-00-211021-0, Revised Edition 1978. Sir Charles Dilke, A Victorian Tragedy. Collins, 1958. 
ISBN 0 333 62020 8. Mr. Balfour's Poodle, Piers v. People. Collins, 1954. OCLC 436484.